is a recession on the horizon. Knowing these signs can help you prepare. Welcome to High Tech Redneck Money, where we help you navigate an ever-changing financial world. All right. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, what are we going to be going over today? We're going to understand why a recession on the way will help you prepare. We're going to go over five indicators and see where they stand and then draw some conclusions uh, and maybe even make a prediction on when it might even hit. So why does a recession matter to you? You might be saying, well, I don't have any money in stocks right now, but a recession actually hits the economy, not the stock market. The stock market goes down as well, but it affects you a lot more than just the stock market. Uh, you have to worry about job loss or the general job market. Uh, during a recession, it gets much tighter. Uh, there's much more unemployment. Uh, towards the end of the recession, usually unemployment peaks out and then starts coming back down as the recovery comes on in full. The uh, cost of living will go up during a recession uh, before it starts falling. And then during the recovery, everything seems cheap because of how bad it was to begin with. Uh, cost of housing, um, it's one of those things that goes up right before a recession and then right at the end of the recession tends to crash back down uh, retirement uh, with the stock market going down you have to worry about your retirement especially if you're nearing retirement age uh, if you're younger and it's farther off it's not as big a deal it's plenty of time to make up any gains but uh, that's the main reasons why a recession so should matter to you now the first indicator is yield curve and specifically the inversion of the yield curve uh, most people look at two different yield curves and what these yield curve inversions are is when the 10-year treasury bond rate yields less than the shorter term two-year or three-month rate so basically, a three-month bond will pay you more than a 10-year bond. The biggest thing about this, it's a pretty tried-and-true recession indicator. Um, the biggest thing about this, though, is that we are now in the longest yield curve inversion in history. Uh, we just passed the former longest yield curve inversion at 624 days going all the way back to 1978 and we're still not uninverted yet so we've got time uh just some kind of speculation puts us uninverting somewhere in the third quarter of this year which will make this very very long which what that means hard to say it's never happened before um we don't have good data on yield curve inversions all the way back to like the great depression but it's worse than 2008 right now the second indicator we want to worry about is the real growth rate of gdp which is gross domestic product now gross domestic product is basically the sum total of everything produced in the country and it's been trending down since quarter three of 2023. Uh, previous estimate was 1.6 quarter to quarter growth for the first quarter of 2024. But the second revision of that first revision has already brought it down from 1.6 to 1.3. And uh, they're actually going to do a third revision to that on June 27th where they'll also go over real corporate profits and business reinvestment. And in the same revisement, they have revised PCE price index up a point, which means basically prices are worse than they 
originally decided. The main reason why you would worry about this is because if we're producing less, then we're able to basically spend less. GDP and GDI, which is gross domestic income, also correlate to each other. Right now, gross domestic income is actually lower than GDP by, or slightly higher than GDP, but it is also trending down. And the average of the two is only 1.4. Now, if we take a look at the real gross domestic product and we look back to 2007, uh, quarter four to quarter one, quarter four 2007 to quarter one 2008. We had a flattening and then if we look back at 2001 the end of the dot-com bubble basically we also have a flattening right before the recession everything else pretty steady uptrend pretty pretty flat slope as far as quarter to quarter uh, what we see here is a flattening actually we can zoom in starting to see a flattening right here we had uh, a couple of negative quarters in the technical recession the first couple of quarters of 2022 that's actually when the yield curve when inverted was the end of quarter two in 2022 so gdp is important it's basically a measure of the economy how well it's doing and it's slowing down we haven't had a negative report yet but uh the trend is heading that way. Now, if we move on to the next indicator, unemployment rate. Uh, we had a previous high around the 3.8 mark, which happened uh, middle of last year, and then it trended it back down, and everybody thought everything was okay. But now we've broken... The previous high of 3.8 and we're sitting at 3.9 percent now um unemployment rate tends to be a lagging indicator uh as soon as it starts to trend up it trends up very sharply after the recession is actually declared so trending up at all is usually a bad sign Now the big elephant in the room is consumer confidence in index. Uh, right now it is sitting at 98, which sounds pretty good. But if we zoom out to a bigger chart going all the way back to, uh, I will do like the sixties. Okay, there we go. Uh, if we zoom all the way out, where we're sitting right now, we haven't really seen since the 2008 Great Recession. And our consumer confidence index only goes back to about the mid-70s. So we are in a pretty bad place as far as how people feel about the economy, how prices are going, and how the current situation is so as far as a recession indicator this is pretty bad and it's actually been pretty bad since covid the uh since the pandemic we've been in this downward channel we had a chance to break out last end of last year but instead we turned it back down so it's not looking great now if we take a look at the markets uh i know the media tends to like to say that, you know, the economy is good because the stock market's up or the economy must be good because the stock market's up. And then the circle circle argument is, uh, the stock market's up. So the economy must be good. Right. But there are a few things that are odd. Um, bonds are trending up. Generally when bonds trend up, stocks trend down. Um, but since we're inverted bonds are probably only 
trending towards uninversion. But when you actually look at stocks, we're near, we're at all time highs, but we're showing a lot of weakness In technical analysis. You, you look for, uh, divergences. Uh, if you take a momentum indicator and it doesn't matter which one, this is RSI on this picture, but you can use the MACD or any momentum indicator you want to, uh, whenever you have a peak here, you see a peak here. Well, if you have a higher peak here, but a lower peak here, that signals a loss of momentum, you know, a could be a trend reversal. It could be a pause in the trend. Uh, a strong divergence like this generally means a trend reversal. So pretty good chance that stocks will, I mean, they could trend up a little farther before they turn around, but there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be coming back down pretty soon. Um, another market that we need to talk about is real estate. Uh, we, in just existing home sales, new home sales, all the charts kind of look the same. We are actually trending down now to where we were in the 2008 recession. So kind of a, a bad indicator. So we went over five indicators. Um, yield curve inversion. It's a pretty good predictor of a recession, but we don't know the timing of the recession until the yield curve uninverts. So actually, if we go back and touch on that for just a second. If we go back and look at previous recessions, uh, the dot com bust, we uninvert in November, or no, well, November, December of 2000, and then recession hits first quarter of 01. Really January to March, somewhere in there. So that was pretty quick. Uh, when the two year inverted in 2006 uninverted briefly in may of 06 but then it re-inverted it didn't convincingly uninvert until june of 07 which recession hit full in january of 08 so three months here six months here if we follow our trend line that we're riding right now on the inversion to where it will uninvert sometime in the third quarter of this year. Then we have that three to six month timer that will start. So it's uh, good to have that in mind. Doesn't mean that's exactly how it'll happen. This is speculation, but it it's an educated guess. The growth rate of real GDP is trending down and every revision trends it lower. So there's a pretty healthy chance that we will see negative GDP very soon. Uh, a lot of European countries, uh, Japan, China, they've all already started to see negative growth in GDP and some are already in technical recessions. The unemployment rate is trending up. Uh, it's been trending up for close to a year now, very slowly, but we had had a peak and come back down. So people had breathed a sigh of relief. And then we've just broken the previous peak. So it seems like the trend is up on unemployment. Consumer price or consumer confidence index, not the consumer price index. Consumer price index is a major indicator in inflation. Consumer confidence index is a indicator in people's, or it's an indicator in the health of the economy. So the consumer confidence index is low and trending lower. So not a good sign. And as far as market trends, we're near the tops 
But if we look at all of the previous recessions, they're usually preceded by an all-time high. So COVID, 2018, third quarter of 2007, fourth 2008 recession. And then if we go back to the dot-com bust, 2001, third quarter or beginning of fourth quarter, I mean, of 2000, stocks hit an all-time high, trended lower before they sold off, basically. So market trends, a little early on that one, but we're at an all-time high showing weakness, probably trending back down with a weak economy. So it's not looking good for that one either. Now, hopefully you've followed all the way to the end and we've got a pretty good idea of what the economy is doing right now. Not just certain talking points on a uh, newscast or you know the Fed talking to try to influence markets. It's looking pretty rough. But follow for more. Um, check the website for guides on repairing your credit, building an emergency fund, uh, check some of the other videos I have that go into more detail on that. Get six months of, uh, emergency funds saved up and pay off your highest interest debt and take care of yourself. Remember to like, subscribe, share all that stuff and, uh, catch you on the next one.